Spider Videos recap show for Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm so excited to be, it's the premiere episode, the premiere episode of our recap show. My name is Will Link. Let's go around the table and all introduce ourselves, starting to my left. Hey, I'm Aaron Fenton, and I'm very excited to find out what happens to Simmons. All right. Got some thoughts. <laughs> and finally, Michael Medina has come back to Collider. <laughs> Nerd. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Darrell Davey. I'm here with these beautiful people, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and I'm happy to be here. So this is the crew. We are so excited to be part of this. Uh, every week here at Collider, we are going to be breaking down the episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We're going to tell you what we liked about them. We're going to tell you what we didn't like about them. But we're also going to be talking to you. We want to get your feedback. We want to get your questions. Hashtag Collider AOS is the way to talk to us. Because beyond the show, we just want to keep the conversation going. We love Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And uh, we think you're going to love this show. So let's get right to it. What do we... This is a recap, basically, getting ready for the new season. Mm -hmm. So, season two. Aaron, let's start with you. What were some of your feelings on the second season? What do you, how do you think they did? Uh, you know, I think it came uh, very far from the first season. Uh, you <laughs> seem to think very like the first 15 episodes were terrible, but... <laughs> it's, look, it's, it's true. It's, I thought that when the show started, it was a little too beholden to the Marvel movies. It, was, it wasn't its own thing, and it took a while to find its footing, and it was spinning its wheels, you know? Okay, well, all right, so <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. A lot of people had that problem, but uh, the season two, I'm really very excited about the Inhumans. I mean, that was the big thing for, I think, a lot of people were bringing in the Inhumans and getting really jazzed about that. Um, I mean, that's yeah. the big thing for me. Uh, I mean, for me, I was, it's weird. Season one, I agree with you. I mean, it was kind of like the first 15 episodes or so were kind of whatever. But then once the Hydra reveal kind of kicked in, it just changed the dynamic of the show. It was so much better. I think what I loved about this particular season, it, was, it wasn't really held back by the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They could kind of focus on doing and telling their own story. Um, the Inhumans, I love the Inhumans. Um, this is kind of Marvel's answer to the X-Men. It's what they can do right now. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they don't have the rights to the X-Men, so we don't get that. But I like the fact that they went with a much darker tone this yes. season. Yes. It, was, uh, it felt grittier. Absolutely. I think characters are a lot more fleshed out. We'll dive into that shortly, but much more fleshed out. And, uh, you know, yeah, it was just, it was enjoyable, far more enjoyable than season one. I think that you just took the words right out of my mouth, Mike. Um, yeah, I definitely love the fact that this show reminds me so much of X-Men. I love that uh, that franchise so much, and I love you know, like you said, they don't have the rights to X Men, so it's it's pretty much that spin, you know. But for season two, it's definitely uh, it's definitely stronger feelings, darker, more uh, more juicy things are happening. I feel like yeah, and and we keep talking about the Inhumans and, and X Men, and I mean it's funny because it's a, a property that can't even use the word mutant, which <laughs> yeah. is just so funny to me that we can't even special they, we don't even, yeah. gifted. Um, but you know what? It, I think, Mike, you hit the nail on the head. It really was in... Uh, it was too beholden to Captain America Winter, Winter Soldier in that first season. It was all building up to that. And this season did not seem... And I was worried going in that it was going to be too beholden to whatever happens in Age of Ultron. But Age of Ultron was kind of an afterthought to the season. I mean, Absolutely. they touched upon it, but it was just like a vision Raina had, and it didn't really delve into... That's what really bothered me. I did not like um, Raina for the longest time. Like, her character, it, she just was so... <sighs> Until she turned into the Inhuman, and she she got all that really crazy prosthetics, and then her character, I felt, really started developing for me and becoming, like, uh, just more dynamic yeah. And, yeah. and then they just killed her off all of a sudden well they gave her this power then and they gave you know she had these visions and, and she was doing something she yeah. was actually doing something for once on the show mm -hmm. but uh, also Darrell to what you said uh, it is it is it is taking some darker turns and one of my favorite things in the second season was that they they killed someone that they killed Trip I like Trip Trip was great but you know what it, 
you need to in the Marvel Universe, they need to start setting up more consequences for things. And yeah. I feel like they don't follow through. And Coulson's the biggest example of that. You know, they kill him in Avengers <laughs> and he's the star of the show. But they chopped off his hand. Well, that no, that was great. And this, but I'm just saying he was like, I think the precedent was set like, oh, death doesn't really matter. And then at the mid-season finale, they killed Trip. I don't know how you guys felt about losing that character, but I was I was kind of okay with it. I liked him, but I was okay. Personally, I just liked him, but that was it. When he died, it really didn't affect me that much. Um, I think going back to like season one and just kind of how tame that season was, it's Marvel, it's D it's Disney, it's ABC. It's like they're <laughs> this is their bread and butter right now. You know? They're not going to kill off major characters. It's not Game of Thrones. It's not The Walking <laughs> Dead. But, you know, with a character like Reyna, I guess, it, if anything, that's a true testament to the writers and the fact that they actually took this character that was kind of whatever mm -hmm. and made you really care for her, more so in this season. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was, like, such a... Li she only had so little, like, oh, I was so angry. Um, I really wanted to, like, learn... I thought there was so much more that they could have done with it because she's such an untrustworthy character. I thought being an inhuman... I thought they would keep her around a little longer and deal with the the thoughts of this is a character who's having these visions that will affect everything else and how we will she react? Her. Now I don't know how much of it is because also the actress uh, Ruth Nega is going to be on Preacher. Like sometimes with these shows, you never know yeah. if they're if a character's getting written off because the actor's <laughs> got a contract Big somewhere part else. Of it. Big you part know, of yeah. It. But yeah. Um, but you know, yeah, I, w I would have liked to seen more from her. Uh, another uh, thing that they dealt with the consequences of this season was uh, Fitz's brain damage. Like, they had a character, they, they followed mm. through with the idea of here's a character who is going to be deeply, deeply wounded. I don't know, Daryl, did you have any thoughts on maybe Fitz and I, maybe the way he was in the season? I have a lot of thoughts on Fitz. Um, we were talking about him a little bit before. Uh, he definitely, definitely changed. He's, he's uh, showing a lot of his emotion. Uh, it's making him weaker in my mind. I think that he, in my mind, loves, uh, loves Gemma. Yes. But for a TV show, obviously they can't fall fall in love right at the beginning. They they work directly together. They if they did fall in love, I I think that it would be one of those things where they didn't do it till maybe later on in one of the seasons. Um, and I and I think he's hiding the fact that uh, he he loves her, so he's trying to be you know separate himself. What are you are you insane? He's <laughs> not hiding the fact that he loves her at all. He's yeah. like, ah, uh, when they were when he. Oh, but like, failing. Take a breath. Well, so Take much breath. of the early of this, this no. season was him dealing with the pain of her not being around. And he That's didn't know true. where she was. She was part of, she was undercover with Hydra. He had no idea. And he was so heartbroken because he sacrificed himself he sacrificed to save her. He sacrificed himself to save her and said that I love you. And at the end of it, I don't know, maybe you're talking about this, but towards the, I think the last episode of the yeah. second season, um, Fitz was like, all right, I get it. You, you know, you're not into me. It's fine. I'm not going to, like, do this anymore. There's this moment where she's like, hey, I know that you're going off to um, probably your death again. And maybe we should uh, talk about you and me. And he's like, there's nothing to talk about. And she's like, maybe there is. And I'm like, oh, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play with this guy. And then, and then it was, like, really sad because at the end of it, after he survived, he comes back to her and he's like, hey, maybe we should have a date. And she's just like, oh, she, she doesn't say yes, but she kind of, like, goes, oh, wow, we have to, like, discuss this again. Yeah, this is going to be something we have to deal with now. And then she gets sucked into uh, the Cree stone. Yes. Um, your thoughts on Fitz, Mike? Um, see, that was a problem I had. I, I was not, I'm not the biggest Fitz Simmons fan. Oh. They're, I, I like the characters. They've I don't, grown on me, admittedly. It's I taken was, me some time yeah. as well. This season helped a little bit. My issues with, uh, with Fitz is the fact the whole brain damage and everything like that kind of at times felt a little dragged on a little too much. And the whole like, will they, won't they got a little tired, like kind of like what you <laughs> said, how one minute she seems into him. Let's go do this. And the next, oh, a rusty. Mm, I don't know. You know, I, that guy kind of old. But is it that she seems into him or they just have this very dependent relationship that You're, they. I completely agree with you. I, they totally do. But there were just moments when it just it, I didn't buy into it. It just when it felt like, if anything, kind of like filler to get to that last scene. Mm -hmm. Just kind of stretch things out a little bit. I don't know. Maybe I'm just cold. I don't know. <laughs> but I just, he actually I don't know. didn't like her in the beginning. He liked Sky. He was in Sky. Yeah, the well, very first episode. everyone's in Sky. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't? She was a computer hacker <laughs> yeah. in season one. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, well, you know, let's talk about Sky here a little bit because I think more than anyone, I think in the second season, the other great thing was everybody had these big character arcs that they really lacked in the first season. And Sky was arguably had the biggest, you know. She, the, the season begins, she's trying to find her place in S.H.I.E.L.D. And just when she does, kind of, she meets her Cal and, and her, her mother and the rug is pulled out from under her. And now she has to kind of find her place in the larger world. And I think she really does in this season. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, uh, Mike, what do you think about uh, Um All right, well, kind of like what I said earlier with the whole, like, her being a computer hacker. Yeah. Didn't buy that one second season <laughs> one. But what I really like that they did was in season two kind of... I don't know. It, 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 first of all, they started training her, which I thought was made yes. perfect sense to mm-hmm. do something like that to her. <laughs> but then they started developing some of these layers, and so I know it'd been it had been teased like the death of her mother. Who's her mother? Who's responsible yeah. for all this? So the fact that they toughened her up a little bit, made her more believable. The whole computer hacker mm-hmm. thing is pretty much a distant memory you now. Know, no even, one brings that up. Even Sky, even calling her Sky, is going to be a thing of the past. She's yeah. Daisy. She's she's discovered who she is and who she who she really is, yeah. which is Daisy. Yeah. Which I thought was, I mean, for some might not have been a huge twist, but nonetheless, I mean, when when that happened, I was happy for it because I was like, this is cool. I love the Inhumans. I like that we're opening up this world, and I like that now you're going to take this character that I thought, yeah, she's easy on the eyes. That's well, that's all yeah. well and good, but she was kind of boring season one for me. I didn't buy the whole Skyward relationship and all that come season one, but the fact that they shook it up now, it's like it's she's way more interesting. True. So my question with her name now being not Sky but going to be Daisy, is that going to be really hard for the viewers to <laughs> e- put, piece it together I and was g- all day thinking about oh don't call her sky don't call yeah. sky call her daisy and then the second we started <laughs> talking to her i'm like let's talk about sky like it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna take some adjustment I, I can't imagine though that they would just ditch the sky name altogether because you're right that would be a little confusing for viewers i would imagine maybe daisy could be like a code name or something yeah. like that perhaps so she can go into battle with i'm daisy you know <laughs> so i don't know well, she's also, I mean, one of the things that people are talking about is she's got, like, a new look now. Yeah. She's got mm-hmm. a new uniform. She's got a new haircut. You mm-hmm. love the shorter hair. I love the shorter hair. Let me say this. I am all for shorter hair. <laughs> Women, I'm all for shorter hair. I like short <laughs> hair. Short hair don't care. I like pixie <laughs> cut. You know, give me the G.I. Jane. I'm, I'm fine with you, it. You would have liked it if they went to, uh, like, more comic book yes. with it. Where, yeah, Daisy Johnson had a very buzz cut, like, very flat to her, like, like yeah. your, your your hair, yeah. very short, <laughs> very very, very short. short. But the new look is pretty. I, I think it's pretty badass. I think she's pretty with it. Yeah. That, what are your thoughts on that? I love her new look. I love her change as a person. I agree that she was boring before, uh, but at the same time, she was quirky. She was interesting. She was. She looked like a typical TV character. Actually, it could be on any show. Not not just a superhero show. Now she's actually like a badass, yeah. kick ass. Mm-hmm. I know martial arts, don't mess with me. I know how to, I know how to shoot a gun. The leader of the secret warriors. Last yeah. season yeah. she was fighting May. She fought May. Granted yeah. she had powers, but it's still it's just the idea that she could even the sky we met in the first episode could not go toe to toe yeah. with May. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> no. you know Sky was always our way into the show and we've kind of moved beyond that now. Now she is really part of the team. She's found Last season, she found her real family, and she found her S.H.I.E.L.D. family. Not right. to be corny about it, but, <laughs> but you know, that that's exactly what happened with her. And I guess the word is now that, you know, we're talking about names, she's going to be Quake. Yes. 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 So, she's going to be Quake. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be... She is Quake. She's got, she is she's got a lot of names. She's got a lot I of know. names. So, <laughs> so we're not going to have to just shift from calling her Sky to Daisy, but now Daisy to Quake. Yeah. But last season, I loved... I thought Kyle McLaughlin did a great job as Cal. It was, he was great. He was so much fun. It was the right amount of, like, serious threat and, like, unhinged humor, you know? It was a little camp in there, which I really yeah. liked with his character. He was fun. Um, well, let's talk about the flip side, then, of that. Ward last season... <laughs> Now, Aaron, I know you have strong thoughts about <laughs> Ward last season that I have a feeling we're going to argue about, but why, why don't you tell us? Okay, what you think all right. It? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I thought Ward was the super, like, he is like the super um, agent fighter guy who's definitely evil, but I felt like um, I loved the idea of him being in love with this unattainable girl. And I love villains who are romantic villains um, that want to change for that one person, Mm. uh, whether it's a girl or a guy. And I think Ward 
he's not my type of villain. He's still an asshole. He sleeps around with everyone <laughs> and uh, and then still like professes his love and I just uh, to Sky and I and I got really mad and I think in like the second season he became kind of um a pussy. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my virgin ears. I <laughs> I mean, I did not for one minute buy that he was in love, and I can't remember her Agent face. 33? Girl. Agent, Agent 33. 33. I completely bought they were in love. In the yeah. La- yeah, I did. Because the last scene is what sold it to me. Because he's sitting there in the bar, and he's looking at that picture, and I felt like he really was looking at it in a, in he was really broken up by this. Because he was alone, right? I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, I'm actually, I agree with you, Will. I totally bought their relationship. I don't think he is a, I, I can't even say that word. It's a, a P word. I, I can't even <laughs> say that. I just, I feel so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> no, that's but, the first, it's the first bad word. Well, I think, oh my gosh. I just, I just didn't get that. Well, you know, I didn't get that like fierceness that I wanted from him, and I just saw him in Agent Thirty Three as kind of like broken characters. So I think that's why they just what naturally brought them together yeah. mm-hmm. that they could rely. Hey, we're going through this the same. I mean, with Agent Thirty Three, she was already a broken character to begin with, with mm-hmm. her mind wipe and and the face and everything, and it just mm-hmm. it made sense. I still buy the whole yeah he feels for for Sky Daisy Quake whatever the hell you want to call it now, <laughs> but I like that he's still an asshole because let's be honest, mm-hmm. man, season one. Oh, he was such like a, he was so vanilla. There was absolutely <laughs> nothing to him. That's why the whole Sky and Ward relationship, uh, Brett Dalton, by the way, his name, um, I just, I didn't buy it. It was just kind of like, eh, whatever. He's boring. Again, he's a badass super spy. He's Is he like a triple agent now? Like, I don't really know what his game plan is. Well, you know, it's funny when you said Brett Dalton, the actor, when he, the series started, I mean, apologies, Brett. I thought, like, this guy stinks. Like, he is a stiff. And then all of a sudden, when Captain America went to Soldier, again, being too beholden to the movie universe, yeah. and it was revealed that he was a mole for yeah. Hydra inside S.H.I.E.L.D., it was like, you have become now the most interesting person <laughs> on the show suddenly, yeah. just yeah. with this thing. Well, you kind of got a glimpse of that when he was with uh, May, and they kind of had their little uh, yeah. romp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like, all right, not that that was a big deal, but you're like, all right, there's something to this guy, but then you're absolutely right. Just yeah. change the character. Are you going to, whose side are you taking with the big debate? Was he in <laughs> love with Agent 33? I feel like it's really hard to be on the side of a villain once they're in love. I, rec- I relate what you were talking about to Klaus from The Vampire Diaries. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I love uh, how you could really, um, for Caroline, he loves Caroline. I believe it. You know what I mean? It, it, you can't, I, I just can't fall into a stereotype and say that a villain can't be in love too. You know, I mean, giving them you know a second chance, if you will. Like you know? a different show, Fitz. No, no, not Fitz. I'm so sorry. Um, from Fisk, Wilson Fisk. Fisk? Wilson On Fisk. Di- that's a great example of that a is. villain great. in that love is. that you just kind of totally. Oh my god, I wanted him to win I so bad. Yeah. I, or at least get away. I wanted him to get he's away. I wanted him to get married. Yeah, in Daredevil, <laughs> Wilson Fisk. If you haven't watched it, I'm sure you have. Uh, he. Watch that's it. a great example. Yeah of a character, of a villain in love. You know, Ward, though, he also, though, to me, was the epitome of the the grittiness of this season. I mean, he's killing members of his family. He is, the whole setup that he had with Bobby, and he had her tied up and, and waiting for Hunter to come in, mm-hmm. and the gun was going to shoot him and kill him. I thought that was great. It was it was mean. It was it was it felt real. It, that, that's when I like Agents of Shield best when it's actually agents out there risking their lives in like mm-hmm. kind of a gritty, real way. And mm-hmm. I totally agree with you on that. I think like for his character, the whole second season, I really didn't like it until that moment where he, because he said he kept he was such a manipulative um, spy, and that's what spies are supposed to be. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I didn't like him until that moment where he's like, okay, I try to change my way and you guys are like keep telling me I'm the villain and I can't be trusted so I'm gonna kill Bobby I wish she would have died I would really I wish she would have died I wish they would have killed her but then there'd be no spinoff no, yeah it, mm. uh, no, no. <laughs> the spinoff the spinoff is another is <laughs> gonna be another issue I think because they're talking about spinning off Bobby and Hunter and mm-hmm. the question is they added so much life to the season yeah they were fantastic yes and I would hate to see them on another show. I would hate to lose that energy. I mean, clearly you want to lose that energy. I want to lose. I mean, I would keep Hunter. But, I mean, I thought, because the same thing with, uh, 
I'm a fan of love. And I think Bobby is also a very manipulative character. And she just like, mm. it's, they're in an abusive relationship. But, and poor yeah. Hunter. And uh, the only time I thought she redeemed herself was when she was going to sacrifice herself for love. Mm -hmm. And it would have made such an epic thing for me if she had died at the end and I would have been like, you are redeemed and I love you and <laughs> now Hunter can move on. Well, you know, I mean, to defend Bobby a little bit here, I mean, she was undercover with Hydra for a long time, so that's going to mess you up in some ways. I feel anytime you're doing undercover work that deep. It seemed like she was that kind she was of always that way yeah. uh, before that. Well, if I may, I just, uh, Adrian Pilecki, who plays Bobby, I just thought, first of all, was an amazing addition to the cast. Mm -hmm. I, I really like her on this show. Yeah. Um, I like the fact that they kind of have that yin and yang. Like, you know, they're both badass spies, but at the mm -hmm. same time, he's kind of a sweetie. You know, he <laughs> wants love, but she's like such a hardcore soldier. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like she's drinking that Kool-Aid. Just kind of <laughs> said, like with the uh, the Hydra, you know, she was, I don't want to say she was brainwashed, but she was deep undercover. But she's so like by the book when we saw like the new shield mm -hmm. and all that, like yeah. she's just a soldier. She will do whatever she has to do. Yeah, she, she, I'm not saying, I don't, I don't buy that she can't be in love or sacrifice, but mm -hmm. at the same time, she's a little, a little harder. I'm sure that we're going to see more uh, layers to her, you yeah. know, in the spinoff, which I'm looking forward to, but. Hopefully that, yeah. yeah. Um, but she is a super spy, and I guess spies are supposed to be that. Darrell, are you looking for uh, look forward to the spinoff for them, or do you want to keep them on the the? Are you with me? and want to keep them on the main I show? I want to keep them on the show. I want to say this about Bobby. I think she is the coolest name, Mockingbird. I think she's one of the coolest agents yeah. of S.H.I.E.L.D. She is a badass. She was Wonder Woman in 2011. Yeah, I for feel a brief like time. She's, for a brief time. <laughs> obviously, that show didn't uh, get picked up, I don't think. Uh, she's beautiful. I, I, I think, the, obviously, the dynamic between her and Hunter is great. That that I just feel like, obviously, because it's a TV show, they played up the fact that they were married too strongly, in my opinion. Hmm. I feel like, in, obviously, it's not real life. Yeah. But in a more real situation, it's not, I feel like it wouldn't be as big of a deal that you're working with your ex-wife. It's like they always have to point oh. out the obvious. Oh, it's my ex-wife. You've never ex been married. Or, <laughs> uh, well, and, and regardless, it's a TV married. show. Even if even if you were even if you were married, it's a TV show. Um, but I feel like she could not be more badass, beautiful, and 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 have as cool moves, cool as cool moves as she does with those batons. And I thought they also added a lot of humor into thing with they with did. the real with Hunter. He always had like quips about her and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. He did. He was another yeah. one. Really this character, that. I think for me, kind of came out of nowhere. Like I didn't expect much. I kind of expected another trip, like a throwaway character almost. Yeah. you know what I mean. But, but he it stood was, out. Exactly. Like, he just really grew on me. He was turned into a fantastic character. I he came him. in with Xena Warrior Princess, That's right? right? Yeah. That's right. In the yes. uh, season premiere, I think. That was, was in the right? season premiere. Yeah. With Lucy right. Lawless. They promoted Lucy Lawless is going to be in and then killed her off immediately. <laughs> so <laughs> sad. <laughs> yeah. But she came back in a flashback she did. later. She so, did. so that worked out. So, uh, the other thing I would say, the other character that came in last season that I really liked was Mac. Oh, yeah. He was a great character. It took me a long time to figure out because you knew he was working with Bobby on something. And at one point, he ended up having to capture Hunter. And he yeah. was like, he kept him locked up and yeah. everything mm -hmm. uh, while they were kind of taking over where the new shield was kind of coming in. And uh, I thought Mac did a great job. He's the closest thing that this series has to like uh, their, like The Rock, basically. <laughs> I mean, he's yeah. a, a big guy. <laughs> he kicks a lot of ass. Mm -hmm. He's good. You know? Yeah, he does, he's great. He's great. He's working on the cars. <laughs> Somebody's got to work on the cars. No, every team <laughs> needs that that tank, you know, that big guy they can rely on. I'm not quite sold on him yet like you are. Uh, he's grown on me a little bit, but for, uh, there, he's, I feel like there's still a lot to this character that we just haven't seen yet. Mm. We're going to see more of him in the third season, though, because yes. him and Lincoln, it seems like they don't like each other and there's yes. going to be a lot of problems because he doesn't really trust in humans at yeah. all. Now, with, I mean, look, let's be fair. He has good reason. <laughs> he was in the last episode, and this is where I was totally sold on his badassness. He's waiting there with the, uh, sitting by the, the box of the crystals and everything, and he's got an ax, and he's waiting for Gordon <laughs> to, to <laughs> teleport into the room, and he's basically going to take this guy out. And it's just him with Mac. It was just totally badass. Are you, are you a Mac fan? Absolutely, I'm a Mac fan. Mac Daddy. Um, he is <laughs> the creme de la creme. Look at the guy. I mean, if he's even when he's not on the show, you walk across the street and see that guy. You'll you'll say, okay, that guy is like you're not a gonna mess superhero. With him. Yeah. You're not gonna mess with that guy. He could be in the NBA. You know what I mean? I don't know. He's just perfect. I mean, yeah, no, added, I'm the coolness, the attitude, but he's also a good guy. I feel like he's so 
uh, you could feel for him so much. He has so he, much, you know, he's vulnerability. Got, he's got a strong moral con yeah, con he's convictions good, because he'll yeah. go against Colson. He's not yeah. just going to line up with whatever they mm -hmm. said. Uh, you know, it's funny. We haven't talked about Colson this whole time. It's funny because he's like the main character of this show. But we haven't brought him up because I think he's such a consistent rock yeah. to the show. He's he's very like he's professional. He gets the job done. Mm -hmm. And there's not I mean, I don't want to say there's not much to him because I, I, I think he's kind of a fascinating character and what yeah. he's gone through. But you don't think of him as much in, in the same ways that we're talking about some of these other people. OK, so my biggest thing about uh, this Colson is presumably still dead in the Marvel films. But, and like they don't mention any of like the Avengers, yeah. especially. Your friend uh, is still alive. Oh, they yeah, yeah, your friend is still alive. And the only person I think right now that would know that he's alive would be Thor. Because in, the, in one of the episodes, um, Sif comes down right. and she mm -hmm. sees Agent Colson. Yeah. And then she doesn't tell Thor, and that, like Thor doesn't tell the rest of the team. And how's he gonna get his new hand? Well, that, I'm assuming there's going to be some uh, Stark Industries oh. uh, work on that. And is that. he not going to yeah. tell anybody that he's also alive? Like, <laughs> when is this going to come out? I assume that everybody, I assume all the Avengers know he's alive at this point. Yeah. I assume it's just kind of an off camera thing. I mean, I know that's because you're not going to get like Robert Downey Jr. to yeah. necessarily come on the show. So, I mean, that's what I'm thinking, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they don't know, <laughs> which is actually kind of hilarious. <laughs> well, it is a little silly because I think he was such, Clark Gregg was such, uh, so much fun in the films, even though he was just like, would briefly appear, pop in a film or two. Um, but he was so much fun. So the fact that they haven't even at least acknowledged that he's back seems a little off. But I think that's one of the things I think us as viewers get a little spoiled when we come across an actor that's that good. Mm -hmm. Because then you just kind of depend on, you just know that, okay, I don't need to worry about this character or this actor because I know he's going to go out there and do an amazing job. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think we just take characters like that for granted. But that's a good yes. thing because he's such a fantastic actor. Yes. Um, the other person, the other kind of backbone of this team, May. And last season, we got to see her back. So we got to see what happened in Bahrain. We got to see why she's called the cal Cavalry. And it was very sad because yeah. we, we see this portrait of this woman who wants to have a family. Mm -hmm. She wants to, you know, she's got her husband, Andrew, and they have a very loving relationship. Mm -hmm. And then after the incident there, she just, she retreats. She won't even let him touch her. And she kind of retreats into her own little world. And it gave us a little extra insight into a character that I was already sold. And that's the one character I think from the beginning I was completely <laughs> sold on because yeah. she kicks all the ass. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you think? What did, now, what did you think of uh, May's storyline? This uh, The same thing that I was saying about Bobby. May has always been a badass. So before uh, Mockingbird came along, I feel like you always had May to depend on for the smart ass uh, one liners. Uh, to do something that w you would always want to do in a situation, like punch a guy in the face when you're having coffee or something <laughs> like that. I mean, you can't underestimate her badassness. No, that's not even a word. It is now. <laughs> you you <laughs> cannot do that. She, she's one of the. She's like uh, what's her name, Maggie Q from uh, Nikita. Yeah. That's what she reminds me of. Just like straight badass. You know what I'm waiting for in this season, and I think it's it's going to go down. She's going to take on. I'm, I'm looking for the showdown between her and Ward. That's uh, to me what it's got to be building to. Yeah. Like I and hey, honestly, I don't know. Like Ward's out there, kind of restart Hydra. Basically, yes. he's going to be the new leader of Hydra. Is that what we're thinking? Yeah. yeah. So I don't. Oh. Or maybe he's like making the Dark Avengers. Oh, that's yeah. that's a bit out there. You think? No, but <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to, but to it's about. it's fun to like. Imagine. Um, no. Well, well, I think, you know, I'll be honest with you. I think we're going to have a showdown this season between May and Ward, and I don't know if Ward's going to get out of it. I don't know if Ward's going to make it out of season three. I know mm. season three hasn't even started. I have no idea what his plot line's going to be, but, you know, you, guy, you can't keep villains around forever. Mm. And he was he's going to be even more up against them this season. So. Well, there's going to be more interesting villains than Ward, I think. There's going to be Lash. Yeah. Lash oh, is yes. the big one. And he might actually make that but, team that fights the Secret Warriors, which could be maybe the Dark Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting into the uh, some of the Inhumans, Inhumans, which have already been teased. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's also funny, the the finale, at the end of it, the, the crystals go down to the yeah. ocean. Yeah. And the they spread into the, the fish. So, And then the last thing we see is, 
it's kind of a little bit of a humorous ending where we see an ominous shot of a can of fish oil. <laughs> yeah. But so I, is, are we to believe then that people are just going to be starting to discover people who use fish oil are going to start to be discovering their, All their muscle men. abilities? Yeah, yeah. Is that what it's going to be? That's what it's going to be. But also this is going to kill people, right? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to kill anybody because I think uh, – and l let me know if you guys okay. think otherwise, but because of the crystals dropping into the ocean, you see it separate, and I think that the uh, the um, the diviner material that turns you uh, has been separated and is left down at the bottom of the ocean while the thing um, the the Terrigan the, the Terrigan mist, mist yeah um, was devoured by the the fish, which is in turn devoured by. So I don't think it's going to kill anybody, but I think it's going to turn people who like have that gene in them that triggers now before we before we get to the the negative stuff because i want to talk about the things we didn't like i just really want to quick get to one more thing simmons and you have some theories about what happens to her when she's sucked into that cree monolith yes. I, I just wanted to touch upon this quickly okay yes all right well <laughs> i do have um i do have some theories and mine i have two my number one is it could be venom <laughs> I mean, it could be a Venom thing. I, so Venom, I don't know. Like, do you guys know much about the Venom I'm pretty history? pretty familiar with Venom. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So Yes. Well, you know what? I, I, I hear that that actually might be one of our Twitter questions. So maybe, we'll, maybe we're going to move on to some negative things now. Okay. And then we'll delve completely <laughs> into your theory. I hate to put you on hold. Oh, but, man. but I just got <laughs> one, just one of the Twitter questions. Man. So we don't want to go over the same. <laughs> what about same number two? Her head's going to blow right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. All so right. now look, there's, there's some, look. The show is far from perfect. Mm -hmm. We already said that the first 15 episodes, or at least I did, were real <laughs> slog. One of the things that I didn't like about this season was I feel like, and this sounds weird because you want an action-packed show, but I feel mm -hmm. like it could have been a slower burn in a lot of ways, particularly with Sky and her mother. I feel like in the final episode, Sky goes from completely trusting her, her mother to finding out she's terrible, and then the mother's dead. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I would have liked to seen that over a few episodes. I would have liked to seen her torn between working with the Inhumans and and Shield. I thought it was like you know pacing mm -hmm. wise. Mm -hmm. That's just that's just that's just one of my negative things. Huh. Well, I was okay. I was okay with it. Yeah, I really was um, because the mom, she, I mean, she already had her own life, and I like that it was she already a had a plan. Too, yeah, yeah, she had a plan, and she was going to do it with or without Daisy, Sky. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I just, I liked it. I didn't, I disagree. Okay. I just thought it was. Well, what didn't you like? What is something what from the season like? you didn't like? Okay. So yes, Give us one there thing. is something I didn't like and it was called the episode. Yes, man. And it was when the seductress Lorelai comes down oh, and then yes. she, oh, anytime yeah. she touches a man and mm. speaks to them, they're under her power. The thing that I don't like about it is that <sighs> si uh, um, Sif comes down. And she says, hey, listen, team, like, she'll, this is what she does. Like, she can manipulate men if she touches you and if she talks to you. And what does she do? They send out a group of men without any ear protection. <laughs> uh, and Ward is sitting there, and he's just, like, he doesn't shoot her with, the like, the freezer gun bullet mm -hmm. that they have. And he just lets her get close enough and lets her touch him. And he's supposed to be this, like, badass super soldier spy. And... I think maybe he just wanted to sleep with her, and he just <laughs> goes, "All right, you could touch me, so I have an excuse to sleep with a goddess." <laughs> that's, that's a fair. Point. That's a fair. One. I mean, you can't blame the guy. Um, <laughs> like, what's something from this season that you weren't thrilled with? Um, I touched on this earlier. Uh, it's Mac. Uh, I don't uh -huh. not like the character, but I think there's still more to learn to see from this guy. Um, he reminds me a little of Ward season one. I feel like he was a little vanilla. I feel like mm -hmm. he didn't really offer that much, at least for me. Um, I know he's capable. He's a good actor. Um, I, 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 but I know that there's more to him. We kind of caught glimpses of, I guess, with him and like New Shield and stuff like that. But I feel like there was so much going on this season already that it would have been kind of tough to shoehorn an additional story arc in there. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping for this season we'll get some more of that. Okay, uh, I agree with what Aaron said about not liking the seductress because that's that those it's moments like that that make you think this is just like 
cheesy moments on the CW and Vampire Diaries and things like that and and and, and Pretty Little Liars and things like that. It, any show where You're it starts to get girl. cheesy. <laughs> um, and a moment when I actually said everything good about her, but there's a moment that I didn't like of it, that a lot of characters do this because it's a superhero show is for Mockingbird the moment when they introduced her in the in the uh, in the hospital in the hallway uh, when she was helping Simmons. She did an extra spin before she did her pose with her batons, and I was like. Don't do an extra. I was like, it's very unnecessary to do one more spin after you knock out like two or three. Looks good on TV. Soldiers, it looks great on TV. (laughs) Oh yeah, Uh, but yeah, I've something I I like, but I I don't know if we're there yet. But there's something I like. Okay. 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 Um, Can I? Okay. Um, It was when um, it was when May did a headbutt against her twin. Oh yeah, that was great. That That headbutt was was one of the most, the whole fight was great, but that was one of the most epic headbutts I've ever seen in my life on TV (laughs) or film. May headbutting May. That was perfect. Well, you know, we were, we were, you know, you had started a theory, and we had before said that we have the Twitter questions. So why don't we get to some of those? Okay. Let's do and, it. And, uh, and here's some of this. As we were saying, you can tweet at us the hashtag uh, Collider AOS, because writing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. would be insane. So hashtag <laughs> Collider AOS. So let's see some of these uh, Twitter questions here. Okay. The first one is from Quincy Ross. What would you like to see addressed to make the show better in your eyes? Hmm. Aaron? Oh, me? Yeah. What would I like to see? What would you like to see? (laughs) That would make it better? Bring venom in. (laughs) 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 Mike, do you have any? any, Uh, Yeah. uh, (laughs) uh, Sky, Daisy, whatever, her team, the Secret Warriors, if this is in fact going to be a thing and we're going to put a team, I'd like to see what kind of inhuman she comes across, but more importantly, the royal family. There was a mention of ancient or or elders Uh in the inhumans. Will we see Black Bolt, Medusa, any of those Mm -hmm. guys? I'm hoping we will see that. And I think that would make the show fantastic. I don't know if we'll get that, if they'll save that for the films or not, Mm -hmm. but just. A mention of that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that something that can make the show better would to be bring more of these guest stars that are from the films, like the Avengers. Like you, you said, you can't just get Robert Downey Jr. in your show. But these days, you never know because they actually had Samuel Jackson the, on this show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who twice has Oscars. Yeah. And you know what I mean? So if you can have a cow and more and more TV shows are getting great, great, great film actors with Oscars to be on their shows. It's it's unreal. You know, see, I think I want the exact opposite of you, though. Here, <laughs> I like that this season, like I said, it became its own thing, and I want to see it just keep separating itself from the films and being its own unique thing. You know, I got to admit, one other thing I don't like sometimes on the show when they're like, when they're like, well, I know, I know a certain uh, Asgardian who would disagree, and it's like, yeah. okay, let's calm down. We know you talk about Thor. Yeah. We know it's the same universe. Yeah. So I actually kind of feel a little the opposite yeah. of you on it that. It can be one. a crutch sometimes when you yeah. depend so heavily on the cinematic universe. And then, like I said earlier, I mean that's why I think season two was so much better. I agree. Mm. Uh, keep up the for me. Just keep up the grittiness. And I want to see Ward. I want. I want him to get out of the the pussy territory. Sure. I, want, I want by the end of this season to you being like he's badass. He's evil. Sure. I'm scared of him. Oh okay, yeah, let's see. What, what, what's another Twitter question we have here? Which character do you see winning stand out of the season? Mm. That's from Joseph Geiger. Okay. Okay, stand out of the season. You know what? Um, I actually really listen. Okay, so I actually really like this one one character in the episode that I hate. Which is called Yes Men again. <laughs> um, you really hate. This I don't episode. like that episode. It's not. A, but it's not the best. You know, there was this one actress, and I cannot remember her name, but she was Rooster's wife, and she was a very small role, and she kind of came in and uh, stole the whole thing for me. <laughs> I thought she was like an excellent badass biker chick that was like, "I'm gonna kill you," and he and. Florelai has her killed, like has her choked out, and, like, <laughs> like dies. So sad. Um, I don't know. That's you know, just you a know little who, role that like popped in my head. <laughs> I know I you would want it to do this, so I'll, I'll set it up here for you. Okay. There, there's another character that you would like that's going to be in the the first episode. A friend of yours, I believe. Uh, yes. <laughs> um. So I have a friend of mine. Her name is Katie Hillard, and she is going to be um a character called Tina Adams, and she plays along uh, a role with Lincoln. And it seems like they have kind of a love interest and this is the new season. And I don't know if she's gonna like come back and there's gonna be like something between her and uh, Quake and 
Okay. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that they bring this girl back. Uh, she won't tell me nothing, but if you want to Twitter handle her and like get her to say whatever it is, <laughs> <Yeah>. some leaks. <laughs> but you will see it, uh, her and her character, the next episode, so I can't wait to see what that's all about. Uh, Mike, who are you looking to be standout this season? I think probably this, the the obvious choice would be Daisy. Mm-hmm. I mean, because they're yeah, really like yes. pumping her sure. this season with the short hair, the new look, the new abilities. We're going to see more of her powers. We kind of mm-hmm. saw like her developing like one scene with her and her mother when she's like, you know, uh, I think she's like moving rocks. You know, that was a pretty cool scene to watch. So I think this season we'll see her take more of a leadership role because, again, like I mentioned earlier, we saw the the, the progression when she was this computer hacker or whatever mm-hmm. and turning into, like, this badass. So I think we'll see her take more of a leadership role. She's going to further her abilities, learn how to control them better. So she, I think she's going to be really amazing this season. Around? I agree. She's written yeah. in my mind as the Goku of this story. She's really, you know, start off <laughs> really nice and really, you know, un- unharmful, but then she becomes a total badass. And, you know, the way that they're tailoring it, it, it it's like, yes, she's going to be the one, you know, who's going to be the leader, take over. I'm uh, I'm going to say, and this is in part, I believe this, in part just to annoy you, Ward. No. I think he is going to have, I think he's actually going to have a standout season putting together a uh, uh, Hydra again and rebuilding that. I think that's going to be something fascinating to watch. I'm, so I'm I'm looking forward to that. I'm actually really interested in seeing Stan Lee eat some fish oil. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> seen that. That'd be great. Um, let's get. I think uh, we have another Twitter question. Uh, okay, this is from Met- Metallica. Metallic P. Metallic P. Metallic P. What can uh, Agents of Shield learn from Agent Carter, the mm-hmm. show, not the person? Oh, that's actually that's a, that's a good one because I loved Agent Carter. I actually, in a lot that's of ways, good. maybe because of the period, maybe because of the character, I I I love it. It's tough because Agent Carter was only what eight episodes, yeah. so it was mm-hmm. very easy to be very focused. Um, I'm not sure on this one, Mike. Do you have any ideas? Um, I felt completely different about Agent Carter. Really, I was not a fan. I wanted to. I love the character. Mm-hmm. I wanted to love the show, but it was eight episodes. I felt that it took way too long to get into the meat of this episode. For me, it didn't really start getting good until like the second to last episode. And for me, by then, it's just a little too late. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like if you're gonna be working with just eight episodes, you kind of have to move a little quicker. I mm-hmm. kind of had this issue with um, True Detective season two. It was yeah, only like wow. you know, well. <laughs> That's something else. But there are a lot of problems with that show. But no, I just felt like if you only have so many episodes to work with, you got to move. Because back when the show, uh, that uh, Agent Carter came out, there was no plans for a second season. We didn't get that. So it's like you need to hurry up and tell this story. And it just wasn't interesting. There were characters. Um, I, uh, her name escapes me. Her, her, her best friend. Yeah, she I can't remember in, the name of it. Yeah, who ultimately served no purpose, really, on that show. I mean, she didn't do anything. I mean, why would so, so your answer would be, yeah. don't take any lessons from Agent Carter. <laughs> don't take any. No, I think if you're going to take it, I mean, and, and this is network TV, so there's going to be filler episodes. We all know that. It's mm-hmm. 23 episodes. But I yeah. just hope that they don't, you know, again, like I said earlier, like using the cinematic universe as a crutch and hold off, because that was, I think, what hurt season one so much for me. They took their time, dragged it out until the Hydra reveal, you know, was put into effect, and then they can just hit the ground. Yeah. On running don't do it's that it's kind of it's kind of the same thing don't be agent carter didn't feel as beholden to the film agent carter was a little more focused and and i think that would be the key mm-hmm. uh, i think i think we could probably all agree on that yeah okay well let me see uh, another one of these okay this is for wolfwood 37 <laughs> yes. okay and this is the one there we've been waiting is. for yes what are your theories on what happened to simmons let's throw it back to Aaron already in progress. Okay, so like I said, I think <laughs> what I hope happens is she becomes Venom. Uh, they just got the rights to uh, Spider-Man, like mm-hmm. a new Spider-Man movie, and that would be a really great thing if she became Venom. And then towards the end of the season, Fitz figures out a way to take the symbiote like off of her, and then he moves off into the new Spider-Man film. Mm-hmm. It's a thing. Um you know I, what I, I like about that is because of where her emotions were this last season. She's so dark. She, yeah, she yeah. got a lot of, she got very dark about like the inhuman. She was very mm-hmm. untrusting. She also spent time in Hydra. She tried to like have real vengeance against Ward. And I feel like that, what I like about that Venom theory is that that will feed into all that darkness that Simmons yes. is inside of her. Yes, and so the thing is, okay, so during the Siege of Asgard, I think maybe you guys know a little bit about this, um, They, so the symbiote Venom 
was trapped into uh, a prison. And then it, during the siege of Asgard, it fell and it came into the hands of Homeland Security in hopes of making a super soldier, which they did do, and Venom became Agent Venom. Yeah. And that's his suit, and that would be really awesome to like see Agent Venom. I think it would be a really great introduction to a character. <sighs> can either of you guys stop that yeah. theory? Because I don't think I can. Um, oh. Well, no, I, I, I don't. As far as the theory goes, I'm I love Venom. I yeah. grew up with Venom. He's a fantastic character. My <laughs> only problem with that is they kind of sort of own the rights to, to Venom. They don't really have the rights to Spider Man, but they can mm. put out films. My thing is, he's such a He's such a huge character that I don't see them. Let's be honest. I mean, as much as we love Agents of Shield, uh, most people are watching the films, not the show. You yeah. know, you're gonna save a character like that for the big screen. I could see yeah. the possibility of that being the symbiote. Um, as far as the whole like Agent Venom, if you don't know, that was Flash Thompson again, mm -hmm. a character who I don't think they're gonna introduce on this show. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, and I don't know if. Simmons has the know-how, first of all, to even be a soldier. Flash Thompson actually was a soldier before mm -hmm. he lost his limbs. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I don't know if they can go down. They could play around with it, but going that deep, I just don't know. I don't see it. Well, well, oh, oh, sorry. I'm going to see. Do you, do you yeah. have any thoughts? I don't go as deep as Aaron does on this because I didn't follow the comic books. The, the, the venom that I know is the venom that was relative to Carnage in Spider-Man from the Spider-Man cartoons. Yeah, so in Venom was a, a guy. He was a football player, right? Well, yeah, he was kind of like, uh, he worked at the paper with Peter Parker mm, yeah. and had his little grudge with Pete. Yeah, so th that's, that's as far as my knowledge goes about where Venom came from. So I don't really see that. But if, if, if it made sense, or even if it didn't make sense, bringing Venom to any show, I'm down. Because Venom <laughs> is a badass. Yeah, well, period. Look, this is a great theory. And I, I kind of hope, I, I hope you're <laughs> right. And I think we're going to find out very soon. Because next week... Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. starts back up. Yep. And also next week, you will come right back here and watch us break down the episodes. I know we had a lot of ground to cover because we were heading on all the characters and, and arcs and crazy stories in season two. <laughs> next week is going to be all about the premiere episode of season three. Uh, and again, let's keep this conversation going. Keep using the hashtag Collider AOS. And, you know, we'll be checking it at times, too, and, and maybe answer some of your questions throughout the week and stuff like that. So before we go, mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's go around and tell the people, Aaron, where can they find you? You can find me at Twitter, at uh, Twitter handle, at Agent Fenton. Look at that. Perfect. <laughs> so perfect. Mike. You can find all my crazy things, everything that I do on Twitter at Mr. Michael Alexis. You can find me at Darrell M. Davey on Twitter, Darrell M. Davey on Instagram and everything else. You can follow me on Twitter at the real will link. Uh, and you can go there, find out everything you want to know about me. Probably too much. So thank <laughs> you so much for watching. Uh, we're looking forward to, you know, subscribe on Collider Video. We're going to be checking those comments. We can't wait to be talking to you some more. And we will see you next week.